Hey guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you an unboxing plus on feet video of something a little bit different today and that is the Pantofoladoro Piceno. Now as you can see it comes in this kind of nicely decorated box if you will. It's got the Italian colors, you've got the Pantofoladoro branding there on the top in gold. Open it up, take a look at the inside and you can see that all they include in the box are the shoes themselves. They do not come with any extras so keep that in mind. Get the shoes out of the box, get this box out of the way and as always guys if you could take a quick second to leave a like on the video it would be greatly appreciated so here is a look at the black and white colorway of the Piceno. Um, this is a, a model from Pantofoladoro that I've had my eye on for quite some time now. Really like the overall aesthetics of the shoe, especially in this colorway with that kind of half white, half black design. And for the most part, I just enjoy Pantofoladoro's as a whole. I like the old school vibe. For those of you that are not familiar with this particular brand, it's an old school Italian brand. They've been along, around for a long time. Um, still making shoes handmade in Italy to this day. Um, and they aren't necessarily the most popular, especially on a professional level, mainly because they're not paying any marketing dollars or anything like that. But if you're looking for something that is super old school and really built to last, um, this is definitely something to consider. It's an alternative to the Copa Mundial that is arguably a little bit more flashy, but for the most part, I don't think this is one of those shoes that's gonna appeal to the younger generation, at least for the most part. Um, to me, this is one of those shoes that really does stand out. It's super unique. Um, if you think that a brightly colored pair of Mercurials or Hypervenoms or Adi Zeros are going to stand out, try wearing a pair of Pantafola Doros around and people are going to start asking you, what the heck are those? I've never seen anything like that. And most of the response is generally very, very positive, especially if you go around um, some 30, 40, 50 year old guys playing. Um, they're really going to get a kick out of you wearing these things because they are um, just that unique and it's just not something that you see every day. So like I mentioned, Pantofolo Doro, Italian based companies, all of their shoes are made in Italy and the quality is superb to say the least. It's um, really nice. This particular version is a calfskin leather, as are most of the top end Pantafolo Doro models. And I know that a lot of people are probably asking why would they use calfskin leather instead of kangaroo leather. And you have to consider that this is an old school Italian company. They've been around for a long time. And if you were making shoes back in the early 1930s, 1940s, um, there's no kangaroos kind of jumping around Italy. There's lots of cows though, so they use calfskin and the quality of the calfskin leather that they use on these shoes is absolutely incredible easily on par with any of the kangaroo leather that you're going to find from shoes like the Adidas Copa Mundial, like the Nike Premier, the Tiempo Legend. The quality is there. Um, just because it isn't kangaroo leather doesn't necessarily make it inferior. So just keep that in mind. I know a lot of people like to label kangaroo leather as the best of the best, and generally it is, but there is very high quality calfskin out there um, as made evident by Pantafolo Duro, as you can see on this shoe. It's very, very nice. So old school construction, they have a lot of different shoes um, lots of different designs, all of which are pretty much variations on a full leather upper. There's no synthetics used on the boot whatsoever, at least on the outside. The heel liner is made out of a synthetic material, but other than that, all of the materials on the upper are calfskin leather, which is um, really all you can ask for. It makes for a very heavy shoe. It's not necessarily all that lightweight, but again, they're going for that old school design, something that is built to have a nice touch, built to have some traction, and of course, built to last, which is really all you can ask for from any soccer shoe. And to me, this is something that I really enjoy wearing. I like um, wearing something that's a bit of a throwback, a little bit different, and I just like that old school traditional leather feel. So I'm very, very excited to try out the Pacheno for the first time. Now, as far as the upper itself goes, full calfskin leather, you can see there's plenty of overlays on the upper. You got this overlay at the toe and forefoot that is not only going to add a second layer of cushioning as far as touch on the ball, but it's also going to enhance the durability because if you were to wear, a, wear away a hole in the upper, you'd have to wear it through two different layers of of leather that you can see already have a decent amount of thickness to it. Um, so that will take a little bit of time to break in. I can tell already it is relatively stiff from right out of the box. Not necessarily the quality of the leather, but you can tell that it's a lot of material to kind of wear in and uh, soften up before it's gonna start to truly feel comfortable, nice and flexible and move with your foot. You got a leather tongue. You got an extra layer of leather kind of going around the lace holes. As, as you can see, the lace holes themselves are metal, which I think is pretty cool. And you got that accenting white color against the black upper that looks really good. You got lots and lots of extra layers, lots of strips of leather, I should say, going across the lateral and medial sides of the midfoot. This is not only going to 
um, give the shoe a unique look, but it's also going to help in preventing any overstretching through the middle of the foot, which is obviously very important in having a secure fit in the long run. And just judging by how many different layers there are here, I don't think it's going to stretch too much in the midfoot area of the boot. And then of course, as you guys can see, the back half of the shoe is a white calfskin leather. Again, no synthetics used. There is an internal plastic heel counter of some kind. And then of course, you got that Pantafolo Doro embroidery with the three stars in black on the back that looks absolutely phenomenal along with the white three stars here on the outside of the shoe again as i mentioned central lacing system with a calfskin leather tongue and then the liner on the inside as you can see is a synthetic material there's not a lot of padding here it reminds me very much of the adidas copa mundial in that respect you can see on the underside of the tongue you don't see a size you don't see anything like that you just see made in italy which i thought was pretty cool you got that gold uh, made in Italy branding right there. And then the insole, while it is slightly glued in, you could remove it if you wanted to. I'm just not going to for the sake of the structural integrity of the shoe. But basically it's similar to the Mizuno insoles in that it's slightly textured. So it's gonna grip your sock a little bit better than your average insole will. And another thing to note is that the laces are flat laces and they're not particularly long, which is kind of unique for an older traditionally styled shoe because they tend to be very, very long and you have to wrap them around. Um, but these ones don't seem to be all that long. So that's definitely a positive, at least for me. As far as the outsole goes, this is the firm ground version of the Piceno. And one of the major things that stood out to me the second I saw the shoe is that you're going to find nylon stitching going around the outside edge of the entire sole plate, making the construction between the sole plate and the upper very, very solid. It's going to be very difficult to have any kind of separation. Again, kind of just talking about the durability of this shoe and how well made Pantafolo Doros are in general. Sole plate itself is a plastic material. You can see that it's pretty much completely flat. And that's just because this is kind of the old school way of making a soccer shoe. It's going to take time before this becomes nice and flexible. It's going to take time before the shoe molds to your foot. But once it does, it's going to be a very, very comfortable playing experience. And I can't wait until I get to that point. Now, the firm ground stud pattern is pretty straightforward. Similar, again, to what you're going to find from the Adidas Copa Mundial. You got your four conical studs in the back, your conical studs in the forefoot. But what's different is you have these little extra studs in white, kind of going around the middle, adding a little bit of extra support. And that's just because this is a slightly thinner sole plate than what you're going to find on the Adidas Copa Mundial. Very curious to see how it's going to perform though. I would think that it's going to do pretty well on harder natural grass playing surfaces, but if you did play on softer grounds, you may run into some issue with slipping, um, but that's of course what the soft ground stud pattern is designed for. You can see that there is a sticker here, size 42. That is the size of the shoe. 42 is basically the equivalent of a 9 US, and I'm going to show you what these look like on feet a little bit later in the video, but next we'll move on to a quick weigh-in so you can see how lightweight these guys are. Here's a quick hint, they're not that light. A lot of people tend to criticize the Adidas Copa Mundial for being too heavy in comparison to a modern soccer shoe, but the Pantafolo Doro makes the Copa seem relatively light, especially when you hold it in your hand. I wouldn't say that it's heavy to the point where it's no longer wearable, but it definitely does weigh a little bit more. So I'm gonna weigh this pair for you today in real time. Keep in mind that this is a brand new pair in a size nine US. We're gonna throw it on the scale. And you can see that these guys weigh in at 11.6 ounces. So pretty heavy for, um, in comparison to an average soccer shoe, which tends to weigh in somewhere around the nine to 10 ounce mark. Um, but 11.6 ounces, like I said, it is a little bit heavier. Um, that's not really my main concern with this particular shoe. You also have to take into consideration that this is pretty much straight leather. There's no treatment process. There's nothing like that. So it will absorb a decent amount of water and will take a little while to dry as well. So while it's 11.6 ounces, nice and dry, once you start wearing them and sweat starts to absor be absorbed into the leather, I'm sure it'll pick up another ounce or two. So just keep that in mind. So that's pretty much it as far as the weigh-in portion of this video. And move on next to a quick on feet so you can get a better idea as to how these shoes fit and what the sizing is like. All right, here's a look at the Pantafolo Doros on feet. And just ba based on first impressions from trying them on, they definitely feel relatively stiff. There's not a whole lot of underfoot cushioning and the leather just requires a lot of break in time before it's gonna start to mold and stretch and form to your feet and just soften up in general. Like I said, there are a lot of extra layers there and you really can feel them when they're new out of the box. So I can expect these to take a lot longer to break in than your average modern soccer shoe would. They do have some decent amount of weight to them as well as I just showed you, but for the most part, they don't feel overly heavy on feet if that's something that you worry about. 
Visually, I think they look fantastic. I love the old school look. And then of course, this one is just a simple black and white color. In terms of the width, they are very wide, pretty much all the way through. And when it comes to sizing, I'm wearing my usual size 9 US, which is a size 42 in European sizing. And the fit and the length is maybe just a touch long, but I think a half size smaller would be too small. So I'm kind of curious to see how much they're going to stretch and how they're going to fit, like I said, after that break-in period, which may take a little while. So that's pretty much it as far as the on-feet portion of this video, and I'll leave you to my final thoughts. All right, guys, that's it for my unboxing of the Pantafolo Doro Piceno. Can't wait to wear these guys. I can tell already that it's going to require a decent amount of break-in time before they start to truly feel comfortable. But for the most part, the quality of the shoe, the quality of the leather, how everything comes together, the looks of it, to me, this is just a very, very exciting shoe for me to try out, and uh, I just can't wait to wear it. Um, so expect to see the review hopefully in the next month or two. It's not really my number one priority right now, um, but that review will go up on my website, SoccerReviewsForYou.com. You'll find a direct link to the review page down below in the description. Um, let me know down below in the comments if you guys would be interested in seeing more Pantafolo Doros, more of these kind of odd brand shoes, if you will. Leave a comment. If you have any questions regarding this one, leave a comment as well. If you did enjoy today's video, be sure to support the video with a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest soccer gear. You can find all of my social media information down below in the description. And other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. And as always, thanks for watching.